Hello everybody, welcome back to 10 Minute Reviews. I'm Jason, this fuzzy one right here is Freya, and we're bringing you today's episode. So as always guys, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. We're a small family channel, just trying to have fun, bring you guys new books, new authors, things to read, things to entertain yourself with. So we'd appreciate all the support we can get. So uh, today I want to talk about, an author I've talked about before, I want to talk about uh, one of his newer books. And I'm going to cover four things, as always, the plot, the characters, the, uh, I'm sorry, the world, the characters, the plot, and the writing style. So I want to talk about Immortal Family, which is book six, I want to say, of his of Bruce Centaur's Mana Mage series. This is actually the final book. One thing that I really like about Bruce Centaur, aside from the two obvious ones, which is his speed of writing, he does put out quite a few books. He puts out, tries to put out one a month. And the quality. It's pretty amazing to have one book a month come out that are just, they're fantastic books. Bruce Centaurs is a great, great, great author. Um, one of the other things I like is that he actually ends his series. He doesn't make ongoing series that have 14, 15, 30 books and just keeps going to milk them. He ends a series, he starts a new one, he always has multiple series going, and they're always fantastic. So this is book six of, I think it's the Mana Mage series, and uh, Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So, the world. Well, i kind of going to have to go a little bit backwards into the series a little bit just to explain the world. So, the the uh, the world is a cultivation type world. It's one of those wuja, wuzia, zanzia, um, however it's pronounced, uh, cultivation type um, worlds um, in addition to magic so the main character comes from uh from the main world or from the lesser world where they have rings that show their cultivation levels and what they can do is they can get they can defeat a monster get its core like a lot of lit rpg uh, cultivation type novels there are cores within the the monsters and the people and absorb that core and gain more power along with that while they also they gain more power and they break into new levels of power they can that their creature also becomes something that could come out of their body and uh like many cultivation novels the goal is to progress up to a cultivation level of basically immortality so through the first part of the series that was was what the main character was trying to do now the the uh, this book, Immortal Family, actually occurs in the next world, the next level where pretty much everybody there is an immortal. Basically, it's an, it's the immortal world. Um, they progress from one, they travel, they they reach their immortality, their level of power, and then they travel to the next world. Now, that level of power, it's usually around the third or fourth cultivation level, somewhere around there. So once they get into this, uh, or fifth, you know, right around there, once they get into this. Uh, this other world, you know, they'll have gone from being pretty much gods amongst men in their first world to now being some of the weakest in their second world. And uh, that's where we get into the main character, Isaac. Isaac Hayes, he started out pretty much your basic cultivation guy. And, uh, but he, what he did was at the very beginning, he gained an extremely powerful man, a monster in his ring that was then able to, to help him through his battles. And uh, also, like uh, um, some, like many of the books, this creature happened to be female. And uh, Isaac, through his battles and through his his learnings on martial arts and on power and on mana and on cultivation and his techniques and his his, uh, his abilities, um, he gained he gained a few wives. Um, by the time book six comes around, which is the one we're talking about, Isaac is now at the sixth level of cultivation. He's a very strong, strong, strong six. Uh, he's in the immortal world. He is, he is reached out and managed to connect with his family. And since he has a very, very rare bloodline, his family, of course, wants him. Now, his family is very, very, very powerful. Uh, they don't realize just what Isaac is. They, they start to realize that. And that is the plot of Immortal Family. At this point, he has, I want to say, six wives, plus his mana creatures that he also considers wives. So I think he starts the book with 12 wives. Um, he, uh, he ends the book with a whole lot more, but primarily 14 main wise. By the very, very, very end of the book, I think he's got 42, 50 wise, something along those lines. Um, but that is the main thrust of the book, is that the, the trials and tribulations that Isaac had in the previous book, he has semi-solved, 
Um, he has connected with his mother, who is a seventh level cultivator, which makes her pretty much the most powerful in this world, or one of the most powerful. And uh, uh, although she hides her cultivation level, and is reconnected to the family, and so he's about to travel to the family. Now, one of the things about the, the families, they're more political entities as much as they are families. They're kind of like the clans or the sects within a lot of cultivation novels. And uh, they look at Isaac more as a uh, kind of a uh, um, an asset, something to use, a piece of property. They don't look at him as family. They look at him as a piece of property. And since he had killed the Leon uh, family scion in the previous book, he is, of course, being hunted by the Leons. It's a very powerful family. They hire some uh, uh, very, very powerful assassins to come after him. So he actually needs his family to help protect his, uh, his wives and his children. And um, unfortunately, because of what he can do, and has, he has actually multiple bloodlines, his family basically wants to use him as a stud horse. Now, the main plot of the book deals with the fact that one of his wives gets kidnapped, and he escapes his family through battle and goes to try and rescue her. In doing this, he discovers more about the, the assassin clan, discovers more about the, the major family that he is supposed to be, uh, that, that is trying to kill him, and, uh, and some of the things that they want and that they hold and their abilities, their powers. And he goes through and he, he, um, he, he basically fights his way through and until he reaches them and, and steals something that's very, very important to them. And by stealing it, then they come after his family and there's a, there's a few other secrets that go along. I don't want to give away the entire plot of the book, so I'm, I'm being very, very vague here, but... Um, it's, it's an absolute must read, and especially if you've read the first five books. If you have not read the first five books, after you hit the like and subscribe buttons, go read the first five books because they are absolutely excellent. But the the the, uh, the sixth book, it's great. It really caps things off. It's It really shows Isaac's progression, where he wanted to be, why he gets to where he gets, how he gets to where he gets, and kind of his ultimate goal goal and the, the trials and tribulations that he went through. Bruce Centaur is very, very, very good at writing interpersonal relationships, interpersonal motivations, and uh, and the dialogue. And of course, he writes excellent martial arts battles. He, he really does. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. So if you guys have not checked out Immortal Family or the previous books in the series, you have to check it out. And definitely check out Bruce Centaur. He's a fantastic, fantastic author. Even got my wife reading him. It's just an amazing author. So thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, we will catch you guys next time. Thank you again. Bye now. Bye.